Thank you. Hereby convene meeting of the Conservation Commission. Our first item of business is the uh, continuation of the public hearing for the Hannum, John Hannum's notice of intent for a common driveway off of Masterson Road. Um, Tony, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. Um, I just wanted to spend a few minutes tonight just to update the commission on where we're at. Um, I did send a few exhibits um, on to the commission. Uh, had some minor changes in our replication plan. I can discuss that quickly. Um, but also the lotting has been refined. Um, we only have two lots now versus the three. Um, we went to the zoning board and got an opinion from town council that they would not allow two common or two uh, flag lots on a parent lot. Um, it was unclear to me that that would be allowed or that was the, the, the requirement. Um, so we've revised the plan to just keep the two lots that are back into the woods slightly and eliminate that frontage lot, which was kind of tight, but but doable. Um, we've also, um, as you, you want know, me to what, share the screen, Tony, um, you can just bring it up the, 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 um, the lotting scheme and that would be fine. Um, and then if they, if the commission has questions, I can talk. So this is the most current and I can't say that it might not change a little bit because, um, there are multiple state agencies that I'm, I'm trying to resolve concerns with. So, um, where we're at right now is we have the two, two residential lots, lot one and two, still served by the same common driveway layout that the commission has been aware of. And really your concern is the impacts to that to bring the driveway in. Um, in order to do these two residential lots, we have to, um, are going to have to dedicate a conservation restriction or property to the state, which is that NHP conservation restriction over undeveloped lot. There's no intent to develop anything back in that lot. Um, so uh, once we do the residential lots, the remaining undeveloped lot would be 81.1 acres. Of that, 50 would 50.8 acres would where the stream is would not be encumbered by a restriction. Um, 30.26 acres or so would be encumbered originally by a development restriction um, and the Hannums would still own that lot. And then also, if you recall, um, instead of uh, doing a, a 401 quality certification, um, because this is designated as a subdivision, we're altering wetlands, we have to go through that process. We're looking to do a conservation restriction over the wetland areas and actually have included, um, I believe 25, foot of the buffer zone, which would preclude any, any disturbance of those wetlands in the future. And so my goal here is so that we had discussions with the Conservation Commission previously about um, the town holding that restriction. Well, because we're going through natural heritage, my goal would be to have, because the state will hold that development restriction until we find a buyer, um, I would ask them to hold this wetland uh, 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 restriction also. So that takes the burden off the town um, and the Conservation Commission to worry about that. So um, there, that's the update. The lotting got configured a little bit, but the driveway um, really did not uh, get um, um, changed in any shape or form. Now, Scott, if you could go to the second um, exhibit that I sent to you. Um, this exhibit just shows um, the impacts. We're not impacting any more of the wetlands than we had told the Conservation Commission previously after we made the adjustments with the commission and, and the wetland boundary. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking, even though we're not, we're not hurting uh, some of the, the wetland square footage here, I'm taking what would be a proposed disturbance out to the edges of the common drive easement. And my thoughts are, and this is where I'd like to get some input from the commission. My thoughts are, even though we're not disturbing that, we account for it for a future reconstruction of the common drive, which may be many years down the line. And we replicate for that now. And um, so you'll see that our, our, our showing of disturbance, even though we won't, 
will, will be a larger area. And we are therefore replicating a larger area also. So um, that is the only change on that portion of the plan. And so my goal is to continuing to try to get the state agencies whittled into what we're trying to do. Once I have them um, uh, somewhat on board, and I think we're pretty, pretty close. So I had a conversation with a representative from uh, the Natural Heritage Program, and I think they're there. I've got to do a little work with a biologist uh, to put together a protection plan that would be part of our conservation management permit. Um, but once we have that completed, I think um, they will use that document and go forward with a conservation management permit. And once we have that and the development restriction agreed to, then I'll fall back with wetlands and that conservation restriction there. And then I think that gets the whole thing wrapped up on their end. And then I think what we can do is come back and close out the three local boards and we would be ready to go. So uh, I just felt it it's, was appropriate not to take too much of your time. I know you're busy, but just to keep you up to speed on, uh, on where we are to date. And it's just, for a small project, it's quite complicated. There's a lot of hoops to jump through to make this happen. So if there's any yes, questions so on that, that I, we, Mark and I will try to answer those. The, the question I have is this idea of paying now for, for what you might want to do down the road. Yeah. Have you ever done this? I mean, has DEP ever reacted to this kind of a proposal? I don't have any experience. I've done it before, but not in Massachusetts. Yeah, so I just, it, it relies on a couple of things and I'm not sure how reliable it, they are. One is it relies on the institutional memory of the Conservation Commission. And, um, you know, that's, you know, if we had staff, if we had, you know, uh, computer records of everything where we had everything at our fingertips and, and we knew, I'd feel a little better about it, but you know, there's, yeah. there's turnover on conservation commissions right. and even, you know, like five years from now, I probably won't remember that, that right. this was done. And I also don't know how that would be interpreted by DEP if they see a notice of intent with impacts, but no mitigation. And I don't right. know how that would affect the, um, you know, the, um, the general permit and the, and the, the water, the water quality cert, which requires one-to-one -one replication. Right. Um, so um, even talking with you, we'd be more than one to one replication just because of the potential for um, some of it might fail. I mean, even though we're going to monitor it for two years. So the way I figured we would handle that is um, so we build this, we mitigate for more than what we disturb, which we're going to do it anyways. In the future, and, and what I would do with this is I would make sure that it gets written into the order. Okay that, and we maybe even add a note to the plan um, that states that um, future repairs of the common driveway within the easement would not require further mitigation. Something of that nature. Um, I mean, I, I think you're gonna work in between the head walls in that, but I, I think what we do is if we can write it into the order in that it just locks it down and um, you know, because we know wetlands are not going to be on top of the of road. And I'm just looking for, say, the culverts need to be replaced 25 years from now. Do we go through a whole process at that time? And that maybe we do. But I think if we can do something on a driveway like this, which is fairly small, not a not a big road or anything, it just gives the two buyers a comfort level that they can maintain that without going through a, a long and, you know, and the other reason why I'm saying this is because of the process we've gone through today. Um, yeah. It's been it's been very lengthy, costly, and and quite complicated. So if there's a way to maybe minimize that and stay within the footprint of the easement, which I don't see why you would have to change that, they would be good to go to replace a culvert or just to grade off and and fill in potholes and do what they need to do to maintain it. So it's your thought. I just wanted to get your ideas on it. I think it's. Um, appropriate for something this small, not a public road or some large subdivision that roads are going to be turned over, something of that nature. But because we're fixing this in a conservation restriction with 
wetland DP office, David Fowlis, essentially. Um, I was hoping that maybe we could do something like this. It's not definite yet, Scott. It's, um, it's just something that uh, I was exploring and I will need to explore with Fowlis more. I've kind of talked to him a number of times, but I'm trying to solve natural heritage first and then I'll go back to David because if I can get natural heritage to hold the DR, I can maybe get them to hold the conservation easement um, for wetlands and then that all wraps up into one ball. If he says, no, we don't wanna do that, then I'll remove it. I don't know if I'll remove the amount of mitigation just because it, it works where we have it. It just, um, we would do more and it gives us more of a uh, fail safe if some do, um, we have a problem with an area but still meet the one-to-one -one replication. Yeah, I think, um... I think I would maybe propose that some kind of condition or statement about, um, you know, sort of prepaying the mitigation would be better included on the certificate of compliance after okay. the commission has verified that the replication was successful and actually documented the size of the, of the wetland replacement that could be used, credited towards the future. Right. Um, so when it comes time to get a certificate of compliance, if you want to survey the amount of wetland that, that actually succeeded, you know, we can put that as like an ongoing condition in the, in the certificate. Uh, I think that's good. Yeah, something, something that can be paper trail and tied to the property would be the way to do it because, you know, I can't remember my next meeting and uh, that's, I totally right. get that. Yeah. But um, you do want to talk to, to David because what we decide does not bind DEP. Oh, so I agree. As long as you are, feel confident that they're going to think that this is a good deal, I'm, it makes a lot of sense. You know, do all your replication at once, do a larger one. It's like mitigation banking, you know, where you actually right. have to create it and prove that it's successful and then you can draw on those credits down the road. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in concept, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, we just have to figure out how best to execute it. Right. Um, other commissioners, you have opinions about this or questions? Like I said, I agree with you, Scott, do it after when we get the certificate of compliance seems to make sense. You know, have that bank of mitigation, but do it with, like as a condition on the compliance. I don't have any questions right now. George or Monty? No questions. Okay. No, no questions. Yeah, it sounds good to me, Tony, that um, what we just talked about, plus any way that you can get somebody else to hold the wetland right. uh, CR um, would be, you know, would probably be our preference. Um, and, you know, just, I assume you'll want us to continue the hearing yeah, can we continue it to next month? I, I'm hoping we'll be pretty much through with um, the agency's, um, you know, conditions and, you know, I may not have them all finalized, but there wouldn't be, you know, uh, a number of questions where we couldn't at least issue the order conditions and go forward. So I'm hoping that's the case. We may have one more. I mean, we're not, we're not going to start construction next month or whatever. So it's, it's okay. We've got another one, but if you could just continue it to the next meeting um, and um, I'll come back or uh, confer with you as, as we're going along. It's been very complicated. So thank you for um, um, you know, going along with us. Uh, it's just um, tough to get answers until you make applications. And mm -hmm. sometimes with the number of people that we have to satisfy it, just it's, it's not an easy task and it takes some time. So thank you. Yeah, no problem, Tony. So, uh, commission members, we should vote to continue the hearing until March 17th at seven o'clock. So, uh, Anne? Yes. Andy? Yep. Montserrat? Aye. George? Aye. My vote aye. aye. Okay, so the hearing will be continued until March 17th at seven o'clock. We'll see you then. Right. Thank you. Um, Next item, are you gonna talk yeah. about the next item? Okay, yeah. good. Um, so uh, the next item is the certificate of compliance with Long Plain Solar. Uh, Tony, why don't you explain what has been done? Well, after our, our site meeting and we had the, um, 
the pond on the driveway the commission had and I totally agree needed needed that area to be fixed and brought up to grade so that we didn't have that little lake there and so that I talked to next camp the next day um, I think the following week they went out and they brought that area up the grade added stone and we had snow and so I've been to the site twice. I've taken two pictures. Um, it looks to be leveled off, but you know, there's snow banks and you know, things like that. And there hasn't been rain. So I haven't, you know, be able to see it um, in that, with that aspect. Um, it looks okay to me. I mean, the grades there, it doesn't look like it's going to pond like it did. Um, but I, I mean, I, it's hard to tell with the pictures. So if you look at the pictures or even gone out yourself, you'll probably know where I'm at. I, I think it's fine. I'd love to get it off the books and be done with it, but it's really whether you've had a chance to look at it and you as a commissioner are comfortable. I took a look at it yesterday and I'm not quite ready to sign off on it yet. Okay. Um, the, we've had a little bit of rain, not a ton, but enough to sort of see where the drainage areas are going. Yeah. And um, even though it's not ponding in that area, that's where the water's still going. And so it's saturated the, the, the fill that's put there so it's very mushy and soupy. It's also starting to drain down on the, on the side towards the stream and creating a little channel through the fill. It's just a little bit. But okay. what I'm concerned about is, is that when you look on the uh, east side of the road, you can see where the water is draining from the, for the rest of the lot. Right. And I think that needs to be regraded to cross the road farther to the north okay. and empty out where there's more room for there to be maybe a little bit of a basin and, and plenty of room before it flows down into the wetlands and into the stream. Okay. But right now it continues to sort of funnel down to that pinch point near the entrance. And there's just not a lot of room. And, and at this point, I, I wouldn't want the silt fence taken out. Yeah, no. Oh, they won't take it out anyways because of the soils. It's frozen in the ground. It would cause a nightmare. You probably end up tearing it and leaving it in the ground. It's just, yeah, they won't take any of that out at this time. I, I mean, I talked to them about it. I told them, it, not in this area, but the other areas, you can take take the silt fence out. But it, it's that soil is such heavy topsoil that you'll you'll just tear it. You can't get it oh, out yeah. of the ground at this time. So, so we'll leave it all in. Um, you know, maybe what I might have to do is just to survey a little of that and actually do a little remediation plan so they build it correctly. I told them that I wanted it to be drained back to that area so it had more vegetated buffer before it got to the stream. Um, but it, when I was out there, the snow banks were up. It was pretty cold and frozen, and I couldn't tell. But yeah, um, so I, no, I don't think they did any road. grading. They just basically raised the road, is what it looks like. So, so they just filled in the pole to yeah. your to your thought. Okay. Well, let me, um, I'll, I'll, I'll push that down a little bit. I may do a little bit once the snow goes, I'll watch it a little bit and I'll, um, I might have to do some surveying and meet somebody out there. I talked to them about it. I didn't think they were actually going to do it until we had a site meeting, but I talked to them over the phone and they pulled the trigger and had their site guy out there and, and do it and told me after the fact that they had it done. So. I'll, 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 I'll work with them on that. And, um, you know, I think we're close to getting it done. Even if I have to create a little berm there and force the water, what's happened is um, in talking to the site super, when they regraded and, and did the road there, um, a, a good portion of that water comes around the corner and drains down into that driveway now where it probably didn't do that much before. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, that's what he told me, whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, but there was work done by the town there. And um, it just, uh, it's the way it drains now, it comes in through that driveway and comes down. And so it, I think it's probably a lot more water than what it had before, but we'll, we'll get it addressed. And okay. I think I might have to wait a little bit. I don't know if we'll get it done by the 17th because it's just a hard time to construct now and do it with any type of control. Yeah. I don't, I think as long as the silt fence is up, I don't see any hurry. Yeah. What they've done there has not made the situation worse. Right. Uh, I mean, it looks better than it did before. Right. It's just, I'm not sure how it'll hold up uh, when the spring wet season comes. 
Yeah. And I think there's a lot of water that's draining, not so much from the driveway, but from the from the area of the solar panels. Yeah, that's it's there's, funneling there's down in. Yeah. And that just yeah. needs to be directed. It just needs to be managed to a different portion of the property before, you know, you know, where it where it crosses the road. Right. So yeah, yeah you know, that, I I know that it's probably better to work once everything thaws out a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, so we'll just wait until you're ready. You let us know when you're ready to come back and, and we'll put you on the agenda. Okay, that sounds great. Well, thank you everybody for your time. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully it'll be a short meeting for you this evening. Now that I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, you helped. You kept these things pretty short. So that's, that, we appreciate that. Right. Well, thank you all. I'll, be in, I'll see you next month. All right. Hey, thanks, Tim. Good night. All right. Um, so next up, we have the uh, detached living unit, uh, the notice of intent for uh, 148 uh, Westbrook Road. And I'm not Brian, I'm Scott, but I'm using the town administrator's account in order to run this meeting. So welcome, Kevin and Chris. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll yield the floor to you to sort of describe your project and um, and show us any new plans that you might have. If you need to share, let me know and I'll make you a co-presenter. Okay, yeah, I can, um, uh, we can we can certainly share if you wanna walk through the application, um, but I'll give a quick overview. Uh, so Kevin Schnell is on the call. Kevin is uh, my business partner who many of you met on site um, a couple weeks ago. Um, and as you could see, uh, we were building a detached accessory apartment for the homeowner, homeowner's brother to live in. Uh, under approval from the ZBA uh, that we received um, earlier or middle of last year. Um, we, as, as you saw, it is built and uh, there, was a, there was essentially a mix up with pulling building permits where we believe we had a permit to build and all the sign offs had been there. So when we realized we needed to come back and come in for and get approval from the environmental commission, we did redraw some plans. And uh, it sounds like uh, I spoke with Kevin and the commission uh, met on site and had some very specific ideas about what was needed uh, to make sure that this is this is done correctly. Um, that doesn't quite jive with, with what we had in our uh, proposed site plan, um, which I guess we can discuss maybe workshop. Um, so I guess, Scott, what do you think the best way to do this would be? Should I, should I share the site plan and we can walk through what was discussed uh, on site versus what we have? Yeah. Sure. And, and I would just sort of comment, maybe amend what you said to say that it was the landowner that wasn't on board with what was proposed, not the Conservation <laughs> Commission. And okay. so the changes would need to be made to satisfy her and still meet the original intent of, of mitigating. Uh, right. Meeting, get, having a one, at least a one to one repair zone of, of restoration. Yeah, where it was proposed before was right in her flower beds, and she didn't want to dig up her flower beds to, to allow it go native again. <laughs> uh, so uh, she asked that the uh, the mitigation area be moved to another portion of the property. Okay, so let me let me share my screen here, and um, I guess to ask with this meeting, are we going to be able to notate what we decide and, and be able to move forward on 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 a basically notating the application? Um, well, generally, we have to reference a plan in order to write the order of conditions. So we need to have a, a dated plan that we can then incorporate into the order so that it becomes binding on the applicant. So if you don't have a plan to give us today, we'll have to continue the hearing and, uh, and, and then issue the order once we have a full application of full plan. Um, the, the plan also has to be sent to DEP. So DEP has to be able to see the plan in order to decide whether they want to intervene if they feel like this is not a wise permit to be issued. Uh, so we can't issue the order of conditions on a plan that hasn't yet been submitted. Okay. So the, the plan that we're looking at right now has been submitted to DEP. Um, and I believe the, the changes discussed on site had to do with the, the restored area um, and creating a smaller section 
on on the corner where there's currently a wood pile rather than across the entire width of the property. Right. Um, so I guess the uh, going back to resubmitting to DEP, would we need to amend the site plan in its entirety to show the restoration area in the corner of this property instead of notating that with conditions tonight? Right, you would need to, sh to give us a new plan and give it to DEP. That we All materials have to be sent to both parties, both uh, the commission and DEP. Okay. Now, all right. We, um, we, we've told the, we've told the building inspector, I've told the building inspector not to hold up any occupancy permit because of this procedure. Okay, so and thank you it, so much for that. It means a lot to us and to the homeowner. Yeah, and we understand the situation. We understand that ultimately the, we'll get this permitted, but if it takes um, continuing the hearing in order to get the plan, it's not gonna hold. I don't expect that would hold you up from finishing the work and allowing that uh, dwelling to be occupied. Okay, All right, then I guess we'll, we'll need to do that. Um, and I guess before we, before we go to that motion, um, so we did on the, on the site plan submitted, we did include a, a slight berm and some notes about trying to move runoff water out of the protected zone. Uh, did the commission feel that that was a necessary step given, given the grading of the site and, and the lawn? I didn't think it was necessary. It, okay. it, it's a long ways to the brook and it's a fairly permeable soil and it's pretty level. So it's, 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 that was not our principal, that was not my principal concern was, was runoff from the, uh, from the, the building. Uh, okay. Other commissioners, what, what did you think? No, I didn't think that was much of an issue. Okay. I have one question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Um, the, from talking to um, the building department, they're willing to give us a, a three month temporary occupancy if it, in, it, and in terms of conditions of finishing the ComCom -com, um, hearing and getting this all settled away and then finishing some of the outside stuff that can't be done until it's a little warmer. Mm -hmm. If we extend the hearing, um, I'm assuming we can still get that done within a three month period. Does that seem? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, our next meeting is March 17th. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can come in for that. Uh, would, I don't see any reason if you have a final plan that's consistent with what we talked about tonight, that we won't vote to issue the order of conditions at that meeting. And then it'll be issued, you know, within a day or two from that, there'll be a 10 day business day appeal period that you have to, before it becomes official. Usually that means before you start work, but in this case, that's not uh, relevant. But, you know, essentially that would have it pretty much wrapped up by the first week in April. Okay. All right, well, we'll probably turn this back around to DEP and get a new paper copy to uh, the town of Waitley and the commission um, in the next week or so. So we're in time for March 17th. I just have one question, Scott. Do you remember how much we said for that we wanted to change that setback in that corner. It was like 20 feet, 10 feet. I couldn't remember. It was basically just to try to just give a one-to-one -one equivalency for the area being disturbed for the attached unit. So if they were gonna do a small strip that was quite long, now they're gonna to have to do a wider strip that's shorter. <laughs> uh, and, and they just need to you know make the square footage work. Okay. Basically what, what everybody seemed to agree upon when we were standing on site is where the existing four by four she had laying out where her garden mm -hmm. is would get moved to the, basically the other side of where the garden bed is, the front of it, and then move it to the right, which would give us about a 10 foot instead yeah, that, of yeah. uh, approximately 10 feet. And then we'd be moving the wood pile and any other equipment off of that area <clears throat> further onto the lawn and then allowing that area from basically what was the front of her flower bed as the front face of the, the riparian zone and then all the way to the left of the flower bed to the edge of the property is what the homeowner seemed to agree upon and, and we all felt was 
about the equivalent amount of square footage that we'd be making up versus doing five feet all the way across the lawn. Yep. I just want to, cl- I want to make sure I was, I was right on the same, on the same page. Uh, any, any other comments or questions from the commission? Uh, no, none for me. No, no. I'm, I'm curious, what's the oval on the plan? Uh, just a contour. That's the high spot. Okay. Um, not a pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Donna, being uh, a spectator to this whole thing, if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to comment as well. Okay. Um, okay, so with your permission then as applicants, because we can only continue the hearing with your permission, uh, if you give us permission, we'll continue the hearing to March 17th and yep, try to wrap it up then. Yep, you have our permission. And we'll be okay. ready by then. So let's um, <clears throat> let's let's go with uh, 720 again on March 17th because uh, we'll have another hearing at 7. And I, I imagine it'll be over by 720. Okay, excellent. Um, all right, so commission, we need a vote on this. Ann? Aye. Andy? Aye. George? Aye. Montserrat? Aye. I vote aye. All right, the hearing is now continued to March 17th, 720. Uh, we'll see you then. All right, all right thank, thank you, everybody. Good night. <clears throat> all right, um, under other business, um, I got an email from Donna. Uh, the Historical Commission is uh, interested in potentially designating some additional roads in Waitley as scenic <laughs> roads. So she, she wanted to address the Conservation Commission and uh, request our support. So go ahead, Donna, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Um, and thank you for uh, putting this at the end of, of your meeting. Um, you, you may remember those of you who were at the um, annual town meeting outside in June that uh, we had a, a vote at that point um, about the scenic roads in town. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of history. Uh, three roads were named scenic roads in 1973. This is under a, a state statute. Chestnut Plain, which now is really Chestnut Plain and North Street, Conway and Haydenville roads. Um, this is, um, I actually sent the statute to, uh, to Scott. I don't think any of you want to read it on the screen tonight. It's under a sort of peculiar state statute that has very little detail and no definition of the word scenic. Um, so we've spent more time than you would ever be able to do because you have real work to do trying to decide what scenic means on the historic commission, historical commission. Um, and what we, uh, what we determined, um, and when you really look at the text of the statute, you see this, is that it is not actually about views of the road or from the road. It's about two things. It's about preserving forest on the, on the town frontage and preserving historic stone walls. And um, the latter has some relevance to Waitley, it has a lot more relevance to towns, of course, in the Eastern part of the state and some in the central part of the state. So what, um, what is being a scenic road? Oh, and I should say one of, the, one of the, the reason that I reached out to you and to the planning board is that the naming of scenic roads can be proposed only by the Conservation Commission, Historical Commissioner Planning Board of towns. Uh, most towns have many more roads than we have, many, many, many more roads named. I, I don't know why that is, but it's the truth. Um, now, the only, the only thing that um, happens when you name a scenic road, other than that some people who live on the road actually like the notion of living on a scenic road, is that uh, there are more um, uh, constraints on the ability of the town um, of Keith and his guys to, to work on trees, to remove trees, and to do anything to stone walls in that under some conditions, public hearings are required. 
what we did last June, after a lot of conversation with Keith, um, was to loosen our requirements so that if Keith Bardwell wants to do really routine maintenance or work on a tree that is about to endanger the public, that he can go forward in doing that without a long posting and whatnot. So once we had accomplished that and the state has approved, has approved it, um, we returned to the question of, um, of scenic roads. Um, obviously none of us have any idea what drove the town in 1973 to name only these few roads. I don't know, I was in college <laughs> um, and not in Massachusetts. So the, the only other utility, and, and we think this is an important utility, I'm looking at my notes, is that in our site plan um, review process for either large developments, new houses, or large scale solar ground mounted installations, um, the town now requires that the applicant note if, they're, um, if the work will be adjacent to a scenic road. Um, it doesn't mean that the development can't happen. It doesn't mean that the solar installation can't happen. It's simply a reminder to the developer that this is a, an area that the town has deemed more important in this obviously subjective scenic sense um, than some other roads. So uh, the Historical Commission voted um, in January to name um, three other roads, which are Poplar Hill Strip and Weber Roads, um, which we thought met the, met the criteria. And we would like it if you would join us in endorsing it before it goes before the town in a warrant in, I guess, June will be when we have our meeting. Question or comment? Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, so the restrictions on, on um, damaging stone walls and cutting trees within view of- there are, there are limits in the sense that there must be a public hearing before the town can, before the town can do anything about an historic stone wall. And now before the town can remove trees unless the tree is so damaged or, or about to be a danger, a danger to the public that Keith feels he has to do some trimming. So what if, what if someone lives on the road and wants to clear trees at the edge of the road, if it's not the town, but a landowner? How well, that's that never allowed. I mean, it, it's, it's been a really curious <laughs> series of conversations because of course we all have town frontage. I mean, some of us have more town frontage than other than others because of the way Chestnut Plain and some other roads were laid out with very well. But um, none of us are allowed to remove trees um, on the town frontage without talking with the tree warden. Uh, no one tells us this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one told my husband that he couldn't, shouldn't be planting those <laughs> maple trees he planted on the town property, but they're 14 feet high now. No. So you're talking I, I, about this. Really, it, it is a curious situation. Okay, so it's it's just it's just um, it just affects land affects land that is the town's land, not. It, this only applies to the town's. Okay, frontage, that that was really my question. Which, in some cases, as you know, is you know 50, 75 feet deep, and in some cases, quite narrow. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts or questions? Comments? No, I like scenic roads. Uh, so I find myself <laughs> leaning in favor of this. And um, uh, I don't know if anybody else has any concerns about this or do you see any reason why we shouldn't endorse this? I don't see a reason why we shouldn't. No, I don't either. No, I don't. No. I can definitely see Poplar Hill as a scenic road. No, that's the first road I thought of when you said scenic yeah. road. Hmm. We, we spent a lot of time, each of us driving all around you know, <laughs> and then came together. <laughs> yeah. And we, we actually fought about um, River Road for a while, but when we real, I, it just doesn't have forests or historic stone walls and then it has nice views. Is there like documented stone walls on each of these roadways or? Um, well, it's, it, 
we believe there are historic stone walls. I, I don't want to take up your whole meeting, but we're actually talking about how it would be useful perhaps to have a map of the historic stone walls in town. And we probably have to use LIDAR resources. Mm -hmm. So we're talking to some folks who you probably know, Scott, Alan McArdle is talking to them at UMass and it might be something we might, we might try to get some neighboring towns to join in and get some grant money to do that. I mean, I'd be interested. I think it would be useful, yeah. Okay, you never know what you could find with LIDAR too. <laughs> right, right. Um, is this, I guess my question is, is this like an informal um, information session or is this like a formal request for us to endorse this? Or um, we would like an endorsement from you before the town's warrant is is written. Um, you don't have to decide tonight and um, I'm happy to send any other information that you want beyond what I've already sent, of course. No, I don't think, it doesn't sound like we need a lot of time to think about it. I was just, I uh, didn't know if this was the final list, whether you were going to put it into some kind of more official request or proposal or um, just do it word of mouth because we can do it word of mouth if you want. Uh, I wasn't planning to do anything more than the, e than the email I sent to you and Don Sluter. Yeah. Okay. Well, it'll be recorded in the minutes, so that'll make it official. Right. Yeah, so basically then, uh, the... The entirety of Weber Road, Strip Road, and uh, Poplar Hill Road. Yes, and I should tell you that we also talked um, at some length about some of the roads in town and whether we could say from this intersection to that intersection. And we looked at a lot of other towns' websites and nobody does that. It's, it's either the road or not the road. It's you know just probably too complicated and annoying to people who don't understand why their next door neighbors <laughs> lives on a scenic road and they don't, you know, yeah. So I assume this would not apply to the uh, discontinued part of Poplar Hill Road? Uh, well, it's not a public road anymore. It's probably so not I, town land anymore, right? Well, I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know I, either. I, must, I don't know that, that's an interesting question. But this, this only applies to public roads, not to formerly public roads. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. So are we ready to vote on this tonight, folks? Sure. All right, so the question is to uh, whether we support the, historic, the Historical Commission's proposal to name Strip Road, Weber Road, and Poplar Hill Road as Scenic Road. All right, Anne? Aye. Montserrat? Aye. George? Aye. Andy? Aye. I vote aye. So there you have it. Thank you very much. It'll be in our minutes uh, and uh, it's official. So if anything okay. changes, let us know. If you need anything in writing from us, again, just let me know. Yeah, um, I'll ask I'll ask Brian when we get closer to the date if he needs something beyond your minutes for you know in the warrants it says underneath it lists, yeah, the, yeah. lists the committees that have supported things. Yeah. Okay. Donna, before you leave, yeah. Um, I was gonna bring up another question that you emailed me and Scott about, which was the um, transfer of land in the Waitley Center Woods. Um, Scott. And I talked on the phone this okay. afternoon about that, which isn't to say you shouldn't bring it up. No, no, it's good. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure that um, yeah. you got an answer. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Okay, I will leave you then. All good right, night. Donna. Good to all see right. you. Thank you. Yes, Bye. thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. All right. Um, in other, other business, um, so since our last meeting, uh, Montserrat uh, sent a, a letter or wrote a letter that I sent to Tom Litwin to codify the agreement by which he was going to mitigate for the, the wetlands violation. And um, there was a place on there for him to sign and return it as so far I've not yet received the signed returned letter. So 
I guess maybe we'll give it a, another couple of weeks, but then we may have to follow up uh, to, to try to get that, uh, to, to, to make it a little more of binding and a little more official. Um, I don't know that there's anything else that I can think of that's pending right now. Does anybody else have any other business to bring, bring up? I had a question. Yep. Um, I was just wondering about um, Zoom security for this meeting, um, just because um, <clears throat> last week at GCC, we had a really disturbing Zoom bombing of an all college meeting. And, um, and I noticed that I was in a waiting room before I was let in. And is that because you put everyone in a waiting room, Scott, so you can see who's in every meeting? Uh, this, the Brian or the people at the town offices set up the account so that that's the default. Okay. So basically- so it should be secure because of that then? Yeah, the problem is, is that it's an open meeting. So I can't exclude somebody. Right. Um, unless I know that they're up to no good. And, you know, just because there's a name on the screen, a lot of times you don't even get a full name. Right. I don't know what basis I would have to, um, to exclude somebody, but I can mute somebody and I can expel somebody. Um, but All right. you know, because, see, if it was a private meeting, you can use that and you can do other things to, to control who gets into your meeting. But, you know, when it's an open meeting, I, I'm not sure how best to proceed. Yeah. Well, if somebody is obviously being inappropriate, then you can you can just expel them. Yes. I mean, you have the right to do that. OK, well, do that right away if that happens. <laughs> And I've heard some terrible stories about things that it was happened. awful. It, I, I had never um, been in a, a meeting that was involved before, and I just thought it would be kind of funny, but it was really horrible. Yeah. Was it just somebody had the link and they just got onto the meeting or? It was a, it was an all college meeting where we were honoring some people who won awards um, related to Martin Luther King day and um, some racists yeah. um, bombed the meeting with, with, audio and visuals and not just one but lots of them yeah it's not good lots of people or lots of visuals it it seemed to be lots of people but of course it could have been one person with lots of accounts it, it was really uh, okay. chaotic yeah yeah um i guess i'll have to be prepared to act quickly <laughs> it's, it's a, uh, it'll be challenging i'm sure to try to chair a meeting and then look out for uh for how quickly I can get somebody off the screen. I, uh, I guess I should do a sort of a fire drill to make sure I know exactly how to do it. I would recommend that. <laughs> yeah, because you know we put uh, notices in the newspaper and it has yeah. the link as well as uh, you know the, uh, the code that you need to get in. So it's, maybe some rabid anti-environmentalist would come on or something like that. Yeah, I you guess it's know. always possible, you never know. Yeah. It has to be some hot topic, though. I think it would have to be some hot button issue then to do something. Though I think. we have some hot button issues. True. Yeah. Or they could just be bored. You know, <laughs> it's like how do you make mischief? If you know, yeah. I guess. Um, See, well, anyway, thanks for business warning business. me. The one that I was in was really vicious. Yeah. Reading people specifically by name. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for warning me. I'll try to be prepared. Uh, it, it's it's an amazing world out there in that way. You know, we have a, I have a database that we use to collect data from 13 states. And the guy who manages it tells me it's under attack daily from foreign sources that are trying to infiltrate the database and why they would want access to information about road stream crossings, culverts and bridges is maybe beyond me. But he pointed out that you know there are a lot of people who, um, who are in the database and along with their email addresses, and there are a lot of government employees, and their email addresses and their contact information is in our database. So we really have to be very careful that we have you know really good security to try to prevent who knows who from trying to infiltrate. And because they use these automated probes, you know, you, you can get thousands of attacks a day. Um, so it's, 
it's it's sort of um, it's a Faustian bargain, I guess. You know, all of this technology. All right. Any other business? Minutes, I guess. Prove the minutes. <laughs> yep. All right. Anybody see anything about the minutes that you didn't like or they looked fine. like to change? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes, George. Aye. Andy. Aye. Ann. Aye. Montserrat. Aye. I vote aye. All right. Looks like we got through another one. Mm -hmm. uh, and amazingly enough, I thought I was going to have to do all this paperwork after the meeting, but everything got continued. So I got, well, I, got was, I got off lightly. It's funny that um, the people from across the street um, came with a, a map with nothing new on it. Mm. I know. And I had written to Kevin. I, I sent him the agenda and I just said, make sure you send us a new site plan before the meeting. Uh, I guess it never got through. Um, but anyway, it, we're not going to hold them up too much, but they're a little naive, it looks like, especially when they don't remember that we're called the Conservation Commission and not the Environmental Commission. <laughs> All right. Well, good night, everybody. We'll see you good next night. month, if not in between.